Hey there. Welcome to this episode of Intuition, Your First Sense. How you doing? Getting through the first of the year, first month, January. Did you do well? Did you roll through? Are you upright? Let's celebrate that. For this episode, it's the continuation of the book I wrote way back in 2012. Everyone has an it. We're starting section two. These are short chapters. I did that on purpose because there's enough going on in life, isn't there? I know sometimes when I'm reading a book, it might take me a month or so to get through it because the time I have, and that's ironic because that's something we'll be talking about in this chapter and I didn't plan to say this. However, the time I have can be seem limited and I'll read one chapter before I go to sleep. And that was part of my intention with this book are small digestible chapters that maybe you work on a little bit at a time and they even meant to go back and revisit and to mix it up. You don't have to go in order. They stand alone with their own intention. Although the book is set up in identifying it, then what to do with it, and then actually living with it. So there is some premise there, but that's okay. You can mix and match if you want. So this chapter is don't name it, claim it, or blame it. And I'm a, I'm a fan of rhymes. I'm a fan of alliteration and obviously acronyms because I did a book based on them, loosely based on it anyway. So this chapter I will be reading. So if you listen to the other podcast episodes, and, but you haven't listened to the It series yet, it does sound a little different, but that's because I'm reading and filling in. Sometimes I'll go a little off script and fill in what I've learned in the last 10 years from when I wrote this to now. And yet these are pretty timeless uh, subjects. So I figured why not bring it out of the archives and have it have a little bit of light, a little bit of attention to it. So don't name it, claim it, or blame it. And this is one of my favorite sayings as it puts it so clearly what not to do. And sometimes we have to know what not to do in order to figure out what to do. One of my favorite quotes from Esther Hicks and Abraham is often we know what we don't want to help us figure out what we do want. It's simply brilliant in its simplicity and its message that if you can't figure out what you want, you most always know what you don't want. And how do you know? Well, humans complain. It is an innate talent that is one of our least great achievements of being on this planet. We would be hard pressed to find another creature that will complain when something happens to their habitat. One that wants to blame everyone for their misfortune or wants to talk about it endlessly in an effort to name whatever the inconvenience was. We are pretty special, aren't we? <laughs> we really are. I believe we could use that specialness to enhance our lives rather than take away from it though. Humans are always saying how we are the more evolved species and I think it's time to show that we are by paying attention to the other species and learning how to be with whatever is happening. We can learn a lot from them if we pay attention, especially animals and nature just giving us the indication that sometimes we get a little too stuck in our own way and sometimes our desire to name it, claim it, or blame it is a problem. So the clearest indication to me when someone is caught in the name, blame, claim game <laughs> is the excuses that come out of the conversation. It seems to be a group effort. No blaming without the excuse cousin. It is nice that the excuses and NBC, name, blame, claim, see, I like acronyms, get along, but not very serving of our individual selves. Excuses are like the brake pedal in life. If inspiration and growth are the gas, then why would you want to drive with the gas and the brake on? Can you see what that would do? It would create that circular motion that they do in the end of NASCAR when somebody's winning. And it would create a pattern, no doubt. And perhaps you're familiar with this pattern, but is it serving you? So could you ask yourself, where are you living with excuses? And this isn't to point out where you may be procrastinating or where you may not be 
arriving in your whole self. This is to help you understand where you aren't being honest with yourself, which is the equivalent to the Jake break in trucks. You know that sound they make when they have to slow down fast? Perhaps they just saw the speed limit sign coming into town and they have to lock it up. So that is your excusometer. Ask yourself, is my is my excusometer rattling, squeaking, grinding in any way? If it is, well, we need to take you to the mechanic to fix it. So the mechanic will be the awareness of the don't name it, don't claim it, don't blame it. Or don't blame it, name it, and claim it. You can do whatever combination you want. So what excuse do you hear yourself use the most? And this is where the irony comes in because I was talking about this in the beginning. Mine is not enough time. Now I know it's not true since we all get the same 24 hours and time is relative. And while I am very busy, I always find the time. I always meet my goals, even if I've pushed them out a couple days. So there's a big hole in my excuse that there isn't enough time, isn't there? And I'm aware of that. So what is yours? I shared mine. What's yours? Name it to yourself. And we will be using a skill set to shift from the brake to the gas. But just stay with me for a moment here. Have you got it? Good. Now breathe. Just breathe. Come on, some of you aren't breathing. Deep breath. Allow yourself to accept it so that you can move forward. Just accept it. It's okay. All right, ready? Now ask yourself, what am I receiving from this excuse? Oh, I promise you are. If you're using an excuse, it's benefiting you in some way. How is it benefiting me, you could ask. So using my example, not enough time or too busy. The benefit I can receive is a feeling of self-pity, self-promotion, or even a reason to not do other things. It could be enticing to get caught in the, I have so much to do place. Sometimes it's not pretty to look at your own stuff, but it always feels better afterwards. If you're doing it with non-judgment, it always feels better to do it. So what are you receiving from the excuse? What's your payoff? Now, what is the exact, the action or the exact action you can take to move past the excuse? Did you know that most people work with me as a coach because they want to move forward in their professional lives? And then they realize once we start working together, that is a whole person approach and I am going to help them move through their blocks, their fears, some of the trauma they've experienced and to create a much more aligned life. So many times I hear, this is not what I thought I was signing up for. And that's such wonderful feedback to have because if you're signing up and working with a coach and everybody does it the same, are you really being seen as an individual? At Vicki Baird Coaching, I do it all as an individual and I would love to work with you. Go to VickiBaird.com to check it out and see if you'd like to work with me. Using my excuse, because I hear this from a lot of people too, and I, boy, I can identify, but I do know it to be an excuse. I decided a long time ago when I heard myself using that excuse or thinking it, I would do whatever it was I was avoiding because that was the real issue. Avoidance was the issue, not that I didn't have enough time. I was avoiding doing whatever I said I had to do. So if I had a class to write, at the time I was teaching a lot of classes in person, but I felt I was so busy I couldn't sit down and do it and the excuse popped up. I chose to sit, write something, anything, just write something towards whatever it was I was avoiding. And then that helped me move through the need to have a self-pity fix met. That, oh, I have so much to do. There's not enough time. All of this is weighing on me, which can be true. But do you really need to add an excuse? I didn't feel like I wanted to add an excuse to it. It wasn't pretty. It still isn't pretty sometimes. 
but it works when you're honest with yourself and you find a sense of humor about how creative like we can be. I don't have enough time, but I can scroll through you know, social media under the excuse that, well, I have to be stay caught up with my the people that are commenting because I am the one who comments on all these social profiles. So I have to check in. Well, that's true, but I don't have to stay there for half an hour. I can do it for 10 minutes and then get out of it and do what it is that I say I don't have enough time because it's going to feel good to accomplish it. And this is the part where we don't blame it. It doesn't matter what the issue is or what the reason is it has been created. You know, it doesn't matter what that excuse is. All that really matters is that you're willing to to be in a better place in your life and most importantly, in your soul for the learning you do now will carry forward. It's, a, you know, that you are a, a process. You are a beautiful work in process. So whatever you're doing is going to add to and carry forward. And supportive habits get created by looking at what's not working and then applying it. So what can you do right now to move through the excuse that you gave previously? Could you clean out one drawer if your excuse is you're not organized enough? Can you go for a walk for five minutes if your excuse was you're too tired to exercise? Stop calling it exercise. Just acknowledge that it's moving your body. Can you sit down and write for 15 minutes if you have a paper due and you just don't have the inspiration to do it? Write the word spaghetti over and over again until one, you either spell it correctly. (laughs) It's like broccoli. Every time I try to spell that word, it just does. Oh, I spell it wrong every time until you move through, but you write something silly over and over again until you move through whatever it is you're avoiding. Oftentimes it only takes like 90 seconds. It's like 90 seconds to move past the craving. It's 90 seconds to get your brain to shift. Sometimes it might be a little bit more if you ha- if you start and stop, but just do something. Those micro movements that I love so much. The same is true of the organization or the exercise. It's true if your excuse is you just can't afford to do anything. You can. You're just using an excuse to stay stuck. There are a lot of free activities as well as ways to increase income or decrease debt. And some of them are actually fun. If you see decreasing debt as an adventure, I know at one point in my life, it was quite up there. And I saw it as like this video game. And every time I paid $5 extra on something to diminish the overall cost and and debt, I felt like a superhero, like I got an extra life in that game. It seems silly, doesn't it? When we put it that way. It seems silly that we create workarounds where there's already stress. So the excuse is the workaround trying to go around it. And honesty is always the best policy. And this is especially true if you're talking to yourself about yourself. So while you're being honest, give yourself the gift of no claiming. It's not a coincidence that claiming and complaining rhyme so well. There is a distinct connection between the two. Once you start complaining, you have already claimed what it is you're giving your unsupportive or negative attention to. You are pointing yourself in the direction of what you don't want. And if you're doing that, you are going to get more and more of it because energy only knows to go to where we're paying attention to. So that's why I want you to pay attention to um, the the excuses or the negative self-talk because when you pay attention to it, you can stop it and you can shift it. So you can't edit every thought that comes into your mind. It is not possible. So for all the self-help stuff that's out there that says all you have to do is maintain a positive mindset and everything will be okay. I really had to edit my voice. I wanted to go into kind of a condescending voice, but that's not nice. So that's not possible. It is not possible to always be in a supportive, positive mindset. It's just not possible. So if you recognize that and you can have some ease around it and you create the habit of, okay, I don't have to name that. 
I don't even have to blame it or claim it. I can actually just observe it and I can recognize that I don't want that. So what do I want? I want to feel like I'm capable. I want to feel like I can follow through on things. I want to feel that I'm valued, that I'm seen, that I'm heard. And because I want to feel that, I'm going to give myself the gift of that now. And by giving your attention to that, you will start to build up that ability within yourself to actually appreciate who you are and the thoughts that are self-deprecating or depleting will come around less and less. I and, and I've seen this in my own practice and I've seen this in working with people for over two decades. It really does work and it requires a little bit of attention. But we can learn to focus on what fills us up rather than what depletes us. It is absolutely possible. And what brings us joy and what connects us to our soul place. So thank you for coming to this reading and then expanding of this chapter. As I fly through with information that downloads, I'm going to have to go back and listen to this and find out how I'm supposed to edit the book. I appreciate you. And I look forward to hearing where you're focusing your attention. And I will see you in the next episode. Thank you for listening to Intuition, Your First Sense. As always, please like and subscribe to this podcast wherever you are listening to it. Leave a review and take a minute to share it with a friend. You can find me all across social media at, at Coach Vicki Baird. And you can book a virtual session with me from wherever you are in the world at vickibaird.com slash booking. That's V-I-C-K-I-B-A-I-R-D dot com slash booking. Thank you again and see you on the next episode.